Our postman does not ring anymore, and for sure not twice. He just places the letters and particularly important my packets in our mailbox and off he is. Unfortunately, he does not always appear at the same time. Because I'm a nerd, I hate leaving my lab and walking several times to the mailbox without a reward. And the worst. My wife loves her Sunday morning newspaper and often had to go to the mailbox without success. In winter, even in the cold and dark. Can you imagine? The ultimate reason to solve this problem. Gritty YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Remember, if you subscribe, you will always sit in the first row. This is our mailbox. It is placed with other mailboxes around 50 meters away from my lab and our house. As you see, it is made of metal. It has a flap for the small things and a door for the bigger ones. Because we get small items like letters with each delivery, I only have to supervise the flap to detect the postman. Or should I say post person? The mailbox is not my property, so I do not want to drill holes into it to mount an outside antenna. The only possibility is to place the transmitter inside this Faraday cage. I once made tests with a simple 433 MHz transmitter. Unfortunately, these tests failed because the signal did not reach my home. So this time I try it with our most potent weapon, LoRa. Frequent viewers know that it has a link budget of up to 160 dB. I was still skeptical, but the first trials showed that my gateway on the roof on the opposite side of the house could receive packets from my test node. So the project was feasible and I defined the following goals. Produce a distinct alarm in my lab when something is inserted in the mailbox. Add a telegram alarm on my smartphone. Why? Because I can. Light up an LED to show my wife that she can go and get her Sunday newspaper and also as a reminder if I did not hear the alarm. The sensor should run for a long time with the same battery. And it should be used as a test case for the LoRaWAN V3 migration. Frequent viewers of this channel know that we have a few options for such a notifier. Different sensor technologies, different battery technologies, different switching concepts for the electronics. Let's start with the sensors. Because it is dark in the mailbox and if the flap is open for a short time, it could be detected by a light sensor. Or we could use an ultrasonic sensor to detect the movement of the flap. Or we could attach a tilt sensor to the flap, which triggers when it is moved. Because the most important goal was to reduce power consumption, active sensors like ultrasonics were out. The light sensor probably would have worked. But I had a bad experience with such a sensor which switches our TV off when we close this door. During a particular time of the year, the sun was in a position where it was able to inject light and trigger the sensor. You can watch video number 171 if you are interested in how I solved the problem. We all know also brilliant people make mistakes. But in contrary to the stupid ones, they make the same mistake only once. So let's try to behave like brilliant people. It feels so good. No light sensor then. A tilt sensor would probably be a good solution and I might try it once. It is a mechanical switch and it does not consume any current when off. The sensor I used is a simple reed switch with a magnet. When the magnet is close, it is off and it switches on as soon as the magnet is removed. And this is how I placed it. Please pay attention if you buy one. You get them also in a version that is on if the magnet is close. So we decided on the sensor. How shall we go on with the electronics? I could deep sleep the MCU and wait till the sensor creates a trigger to switch it on, which would be a good idea for many situations, but not for this one. Why? 
I did not want to create a custom PCB with a low power MCU and a LoRa module. I just wanted to use one of my ready-made boards from Helltech or TTGO. We all know that these boards are relatively power hungry even if we deep sleep the ESP32s. I could have used this board with an Atmel 328 chip, but unfortunately the newest version of the Elmic library called MCCI is too big for that chip. And because I wanted to use a supported library for my LoRaWAN V3 testbed, I went with this Helltech board. I also did a second prototype with a TTGO board and a different battery technology. Also this one worked. As said before, these boards consume too much current during deep sleep. So you have to switch them completely off when not used. That is perfectly possible as we saw in video number 388, where I created this prototype board with two transistors. Now the board is powered as soon as the magnet is removed. Then the ESP32 switches GPIO4 on and keeps the power on as long as needed to transfer the message. As soon as this is done, it switches power off. As you can see, the typical on time is only a few seconds. Also because I only transfer one value, the battery voltage. We do not need to transfer more information because it is clear that the flap was opened when we get a message. And we can record the time of movement on the receiver side in Node-RED. The next question is, which power source? The most obvious would be to attach a Li-Yon battery because these boards have everything needed. This is what I did first and it works fine. But because I prepare a video about LiFePO 4 batteries, I wanted to give this technology a chance. And because space was not a big issue, I used this heavy bummer. I only added low voltage protection and no charging board. We will solve the charging problem in a few years when the battery is depleted. And of course, the same switching circuit as before. It also works with LiFePO 4 and with disposable batteries. I also added a voltage divider to measure voltage with an ADC pin of the ESP32. I choose very high resistor values to reduce power consumption and because accuracy is not too important for this application. In my future LiFePO 4 video, we will measure the current lost by the under voltage protection and this voltage divider. What do we need next? Software, of course. In the early days of LoRaWAN, we would have used ABP for such a scenario. But these days, everybody recommends to use OTAA. If you still want to use ABP, I strongly suggest planning enough time for it. The counters do no more work the same way as in V2. And OTAA seems to work okay. After disappointing experiments with ABP, I focused on OTAA and ran into the next problem. With OTAA, your node should join the network once and then transmit its messages right away, like with ABP. Unfortunately, all example sketches I found joined after every deep sleep or reboot of the MCU. Not as intended by the inventors. You could say, who cares? There are only a few messages a day. Remember that a join process takes much longer than a simple message transfer. Unnecessarily depletes your battery and increases airtime. But there is more. TTN only supports a limited number of joins from a particular node because it runs out of numbers. So our node will stop working after a while. As far as I know, it is after about 30,000 joins. I was astonished that I did not find a standard library that supports the most common scenario for a LoRa node, deep sleep. It took me a lot of time and discussions with various people and my frustration somehow was shared. So far I did not find an official Arduino compatible library supported by TTN or Semtech. Anyway, finally I found a working example of Jack Gruber, who uses the MCCI library and stores the whole Elmic structure into RTC memory. We remember, RTC memory survives deep sleep. 
Fortunately, the ESP32 has a lot of memory and he was able to store the roughly 900 bytes of the structure without problems. If we reload the stored information at reboot, our node is still joined. Perfect. Only if our node loses power, it has to rejoin. Problem solved. At least for the guys with deep sleep. Unfortunately, I decided against it. So I was alone again. The only way left was to transfer Jack's concept to EEPROM. And this is what I did. If you use my sketch, you can choose between storage in RTC or EEPROM memory. We all know that the ESP32 emulates EEPROM in flash. And it will wear out. Maybe somebody writes an addition that selects a different area of the flash every time it stores new values? The sketch is quite simple. In the setup, we initialize everything. Read the EEPROM or RTC, read the voltage and cue the message for transmission. If the sequence number is zero, we know that there is no relevant info in the EEPROM and we must join. The loop does not do a lot. This line makes sure all callbacks work. For my deep sleep or switch off scenarios, I added a few other things. As soon as the message is completely transferred, the enable sleep variable is set to true. These lines then store the actual ELMIC values for the next session and the MCU switches itself off or goes to deep sleep. Here I added a trick. Imagine that our post person does not work correctly and leave parts of the letters like this. Then the ESP will not switch off because it gets power through the read switch even after transmitting the message. In this case I sent the ESP into deep sleep to save energy. As soon as I remove the letters, the lid closes and all is good. And if the transfer does not work as expected and takes too long, the ELMIC sequence number is set to zero, which means the device tries to rejoin during the next boot. Finally, the ESP is switched off without transferring a message. Both measures prevent that the battery is depleted in an infinite loop. One word of warning. This sketch does not work with deep sleep because the switch is not connected to a wake up pin. You should find examples of how to do this. And maybe somebody creates a pull request with such a changed version of the sketch. Of course, you can remove all print statements if you want to save additional energy. Now you have at least a working example of a long lasting node. I'm sure you can base your project on it. Now we only need a decent box for the sensor. I used video number 258 to print these boxes. And with the help of double sided tape, the mounting of the read switch was simple. We already had to add our sensors to TTN to get these IDs. If you want, you can store them in a credentials.h file. Or you can delete this line and fill in these numbers. My future LoRaWAN video will show how to register our gateway or nodes. We still have a few things on our to-do list. The first is a decent alarm. As said in my last video, I wanted a distinctive sound. This is why I bought this electromechanical bell, added this circuit to drive it from my Raspberry and printed this case. I wanted to connect it to my Pi because I did not want another ESP using energy just for this bell. I added MQTT integration to my device in the TTN console and added this flow to node red on my Raspberry Pi server. Adding MQTT integration is not complicated. You just have to create a key and store it somewhere because you will never see it again on TTN. And add the username and this key as the password in the node red flow. As usual, I share this flow in the description. For the rest, I use IoT stack as shown in videos number 295 and 362. Because I already use Telegram, InfluxDB and Google Calendar for other things, it is easy to add them to this project. 
If you are interested in these bells and whistles, you find other videos on this channel on how to do it. You might ask, why did I add InfluxDB and Google Calendar? As said, our newspaper service was not reliable in the past. Yes, this also happens in Switzerland. This is why I wanted facts for the complaints. And Google Calendar? As shown in video number 185, we still have our happy wife device in our kitchen. It is triggered by Google Calendar. So I only had to add a new event called Mail. As soon as the lid of the mailbox is opened, the bell rings, Telegram sends a message, the time and battery voltage is stored in InfluxDB and the LED lights up in the kitchen. As soon as somebody empties the mailbox, they can press the button to reset the alarm. What do you want more? So let's see if we forgot something using our list from the beginning. Produce a distinct alarm when something is inserted in the mailbox. Yes, a mechanical bell added to the Raspberry Pi creates a decent sound. By the way, here you find a write-up on how to add GPIOs to the IoT stack project. Add Telegram if I'm on the road. No dread, does the trick. Light up an LED to show my wife in the kitchen that she has to send me to get her Sunday newspaper. Yes, the happy wife device made the wife even happier. And I'm sure if I have to ask for permission to buy the next expensive instrument, it will turn the odds into my favor. Because of the InfluxDB integration, we even can support our complaints when the newspaper did not arrive in time. It should run for a long time with the same battery. We can also take this one because the electronics are switched off most of the time. And it should be used as a test case for the LoRaWAN V3 migration. This one took most of the time and I hope that you can profit from my work. And maybe we can convince the makers of the MCCI library to add deep sleep capabilities. That was all for today. As always, you find all the relevant links in the description. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence. Thank you. Bye.